forward converter, there are lot of questions as to D, VDC is reverse by the, the reverse biasing this diode. Now, don't don't come jump to those conclusions. Okay. So, I'll I'll explain to you why what the uh, I'll explain to you the the uh, advantages that we can get by connecting tertiary winding to the source. You do not have to connect this tertiary winding to the source. You can connect it to a separate winding, something similar to the flyback, okay. but then you need to have a third winding. I will repeat, you need to have a third winding and current should flow in that third winding when you open the switch S for the magnetizing current to flow. For the magnetizing current to flow, we have to provide a path in the third winding. Second winding, it is not possible here. Okay. One way to have a flyback connection, something similar, have a separate capacitor, that capacitor gets charged or you can connect it directly to VDC. Okay. Now, what are the advantages of connecting to VDC? You just see here, if I connect this diode, if I connect this tertiary winding to the uh, supply VDC, what is the voltage rating of the, what is the voltage rating of, of uh, this winding and what is the current rating of this winding? By the way, what is the current rating this coil has to carry? It has to carry only the magnetizing current. Okay. The peak value corresponds to, corresponds to the the corresponding value that was flowing in the primary just prior to opening the switch and multiplied by the turns ratio. Turns ratio. That current was flowing in I1, N1, now it has to flow through N3. Okay. Um, what is the, when the, when this diode is on, what is the voltage that is being applied to this winding? When I, when I, when the diode is on, voltage applied to this winding is VDC. Okay. So, if I assume that L3 is the self-inductance of this coil, okay, voltage applied is VDC having N3 number of turns. Okay. What is the duration? What is the maximum value of D that I can have? I can determine, okay. And what should be the conductor size and the insulation that I need to wind this transformer, okay? We will discuss in detail. Okay, here is the equivalent uh, analysis. I'll quickly I'll go through. I1 is equal to I2 prime plus IM. IM is the magnetizing current. V is applied to LM. LM is the magnetizing inductance of the transformer, I m increases linearly with time, V induced in N 2 supplies current to the load. What it means is voltage induced in the secondary will supply the current to the load. Okay. That forward bias is D 2 and whatever. The voltage induced here is V d c into the turns ratio. The equivalent circuit in the tertiary is V D C, what is the voltage rating of D 3? See here, voltage applied to the primary is with the N 1 turns is V D C with the dot as positive. So, this terminal is positive. Voltage induced in this coil is V D C into the turns ratio. Now, turns ratio is N 3 and N 1. So, positive of the battery is connected to the negative of the voltage source, the uh, induced voltage source, that is something it is here. Positive of the battery is connected to the negative of the voltage induced or uh, negative of the voltage source which is induced in the winding, VDC and that is and this voltage 3 has to be this voltage D 3 has to, voltage rating I mean 
diode D3 I can determine from supply voltage and the turns ratio. So, comes out to be this one. Current rating I know the equivalent peak current of the magnetizing, uh, peak value of the magnetizing current. Okay. When I 1 is 0, I 2 is equal to 0, okay. I m and I l should be continuous, I l can flow through D f. Okay. Now, voltage across D 2 is voltage induced in N 2 itself. What is the voltage across D 2 here? Voltage across D 2 is, is the voltage induced in N 2. See, this when diode D f is conducting, this point gets connected here. So, voltage induced in D 2 is the voltage rating of, sorry, voltage induced in N 2 is the voltage rating of D 2. But then what is the voltage induced in D 2? When one is, see there are two values, you just find out here, when primary switch 1 is called, switch 1, switch S is closed, it is V D C. Similarly, when diode D 3 is conducting, voltage applied to this coil is V D C. Okay. Voltage applied to this coil is V D C having n 3 turns. Okay. What will be the voltage induced in, what will be the voltage induced in n 2 now? Voltage applied to n 3 is V D C. What will be the voltage induced in n 2? That voltage D 2 has to block. When the switch S is closed, D 2 gets forward biased. When S is open, when D 3 starts conducting, D 2 gets reverse biased and the voltage that it has to block is voltage induced in in this in, in N 2 that is proportional to V D C turns ratio between N 3 and N 2, turns ratio between N 3 and N 2. And similarly, I can determine the voltage rating of the switch as well, because voltage applied to N 3 is V D C, there will be voltage induced in N 1. In addition, there is V D C as well, the total voltage, the S has to block the sum of these two voltages. Procedure is the same. The voltage across S is V D C plus N 1 plus N 3. Voltage occurs in N 2 is V D C into N 2 into N 3. That is the voltage rating of D 2 itself. What is the value of N 3? So, increase in flux V D C D T into N 1, V D C D 2 into N 1 is the flux N 1 d 5 by d t is equal to V d c. This is the increase in flux. Now, how does the flux decrease? It is because of the current that is flowing in N 3, same voltage V d c divided by N 3 into some time. Now, let us see how much is that. Okay. Now, if I equate, but increase in flux should be equal to decrease in flux for the steady state. P A is given by N 3 by N 1 into D T, N 3 by N 1 into D T. If both of them have, see for the core flux to become 0, for the four core flux become to 0, T A should be less than 1 minus D into T. Now, do, we will see why the core flux has to become 0. For the core flux to become 0, core flux has to become 0, D flux has to become 0 before closing the switch for the next time. So, T A should be less than 1 minus D into T, T A should be less than 1 minus D into T. So, that is the condition that I am applying here. So, D must be limited to D max such that N 3 by N 1 D max T should be equal to 1 minus D into T. So, max D max is half, D max is half if 
n 3 is equal to n 1, if n 3 is equal to n 1, d max is equal to 1. So, number of turns is the same now, okay. so maybe and n 3 cross sectional area of the conductor that is used in the tertiary coil is very small compared to the primary and secondary. Why? Secondary has to carry the equivalent load current, primary has to carry magnetizing current as well as the load equivalent load current, whereas the tertiary should carry or will carry only the magnetizing current. So, I need to have a very thin conductor number of turns in the primary and tertiary, I am keeping it same, so that my winding of the transformer or during the fabrication, it becomes easier. One thick conductor, one thin conductor, I will take them together and I will wind it, it becomes easier, number of turns is the same, so it becomes easy. So, it is not only the design, we need to worry about the fabrication, the, the effort that is required to fabricate the transformer as well. Okay. So, that is the re one of the reasons of connecting this tertiary across the supply. Okay. Now, if I choose n 3 is equal to n 1 and if d max is greater than 0.5, what happens? See, I have chosen n 3 is equal to n 1 okay. and d is greater than 0 0.5, what will happen? For the first time, I will close the switch, d max is greater than 0 0.5, controller has decided. The switch is on for a longer time, okay. so the flux, see this equation here, d phi is given by v d t into d, v d c into d t into n, v d c into d t into n 1, this is the rate of the flux. Okay. So, it has started from 0, I am neglecting the residual flux, okay. the slope here is, what is the equation says, slope here is V d c divided by n 1, this is, see d, uh, d phi by d t is V d c d phi by d t is V d c divided by n 1. Okay. So, V d c divided by n 1, this is d into t. Now, n 1 and n 3 have the same number of turns, voltage applied to the coil is also the same, n 3 is connected across V d c, n 1 is also connected across V d c. So, d phi is minus d phi by d t is V d c divided by n 1. Okay. Now, d into t, d is greater than 0 0.5. Okay. So, what will happen when I close the switch? Flux falls, but then slope of the line is the same, it is again V d c divided by n 3 that is equal to n 1, this slope is the same, but then switch is on for a longer time, this is for a shorter time, definitely flux will not become 0 flux will not become 0 at t. Okay. There is some finite flux at the end of the first cycle. In the second cycle, again I will close, what will happen now? Same condition, slope is the same, V d c divided by n 1, okay. the switch is on for a longer time. Okay. This is d into t for the second cycle, it has reached a much higher value. After some time, I will open the switch, okay. again 
it is VDC divided by N3 or N1. So, end the flux in the core at the end of the second cycle is, I will repeat the, the value of the flux at the end of the second cycle is much higher than, much higher than the flux, the value of the flux at the end of the first cycle, okay, because this period is smaller than this period, slope is the same slope is the same, this period is much higher than this, so definitely it will not become 0. Again in the second cycle, I will increase. Now, this value is higher than the previous. The value of flux at the end of 2 t is higher than the value of flux at, at t. In the third cycle, what will happen? It will go further. So, what may happen? If flux, uh, co, sorry, co, transformer will saturate and once the core saturates, you know there is no d phi by d t, current is limited by only, current is limited by its internal resistance. Now, in order to have high Q, we are used leads wire or whatever, which has a very small resistance and, and, and current will be too high, you may damage your source, you may damage your switch or a transformer, it may damage everything. So, if I connect the tertiary winding to the coil, sorry, if I connect the tertiary winding to the source, okay, and if N1 is equal to N3, D cannot be greater than 0 0.5, D cannot be greater than 0.5 n 1 is equal to n 3, my fabrication becomes, fab designing and fabrication effects become relatively simpler. Okay. So, this what it is, I have given the equivalent circuits here. This is negative d phi by d t, this is the equivalent circuit. When I close the switch, current in L m increases at the magnetizing current, when I open the switch, it flows through source here. Okay. If n 1 is equal to n 3, it is the same voltage itself. So, increase in current should be equal to decrease in current. L m is the same, source value is the same. So, duration should be the same. If 1 is, if off period is smaller than the on period, flux will saturate, co sorry core will saturate. If on period is less than the off period, flux in the core becomes 0, no problem, flux core transformer will not saturate, core will saturate. Therefore, d is equal to less than 5, discontinuous flux operation, it is something like this. Slopes are the same, because number of turns is the same, voltage is also the same. So, rate of These are the various voltage waveforms. Okay. Primary current, current waveform through the tertiary. Okay. This is the current through D2. Current through D2. Current through LF is this. This current is almost like a current source. I'll say almost constant current. I'm trying to maintain increase or decreases, increase or decreases. So, D 2 current, peak current rating is the peak current that is flowing through L f. Those are the various voltages. This is about forward converter, there are various issues as well. Okay. These are some special cases. See here, I have not, not connected to the supply, tertiary winding could be a flyback capacitor, this all, one and the same. Yeah, I do not know whether to explain this or not, I will just anyway, I will explain. 
Suppose what if I do not have a tertiary winding? See, if I do not have a tertiary winding and and if there is D2 here, then this circuit cannot work because there is no path for the magnetizing current. Assume that there is no D2. Okay, assume there is no D2. I'll just explain to you circuit here. There is no D2. Now, you see current enters the dot, current leaves the dot, no problem, this is the path. Okay. When I open the switch, current enter the dot, so the magnetizing current should enter the dot. Can it enter the, in the secondary? Yes, no problem. So, the secondary, whatever the current that is flowing, magnetizing current can flow through this path. So, now D f has to carry in addition to L f, sorry in addition to whatever the current inductor, in addition to inductor current, it has to carry the magnetizing current as well. Will this work? My gut feeling is it may not work. Why? See what happens here? When I close this, when I open the switch, the equivalent circuit is something like this. Equivalent circuit is something like this. Okay. It is actually, uh, what is the voltage equation here for this coil? What is the voltage? Voltage applied is 0. I am applying a 0 voltage here. Voltage. So, will the flux decay? It entirely depends on the winding resistance. Entirely depends on the winding resistance. If the winding resistance is very small, flux will not decay. Flux will not decay. Something similar to inductor current flowing like this. In the sense, if the resistance is very small, current will remain approximately constant. If the current remains approximately constant, flux in the core also will remain approximately constant. So, when I had opened the switch, Sorry, when you close the switch, flux increases. When I open the switch, magnetizing current tries to tries to flow through this path. Yes, there is a path in the very first cycle. Since the winding resistance is very small, your current may not decay. The equation is L dr by dt plus R into I is equal to zero. If R is very small, so L dr by dt is equal to 0. In other words, I remains constant, I is constant, is not it? L dr by dt is equal to 0, L cannot be 0. So, dr by dt is 0. So, the I m will, will remain constant. So, magnetizing current will not decay. In the second cycle, it, the flux will start from a finite value and therefore, the core may saturate. So, you require three windings, there is no way about, but then there are modifications. Uh, Maybe as we go along, if time permits, we'll see. Otherwise, I'll encourage you to go through the literature. Both again, uh, even in forward converter as well as fly flyback converter. If I see the BH low operation in the first quadrant only, operation in the quadrant only. Okay. Now, how do I increase? In other words, I'm using a transformer. I'm using a core, but I'm not using the other half of the BH curve. Okay. Can I improve the utilization of the core? So, use bidirectional core excitation. That is something similar to AC, AC current excitation. Current becomes negative. So, BH loop is transverse in the negative direction as well. Can I use it? Yes. Let us see. Uh, in other words, I may have to use a two forward converters maybe. This converter is known as the push pull converter, push pull converter. Why? Both converters deliver power to the load in each half cycle. Both of them are pushing power to the load, both halves. Name should have been push push converter, but then it is known as a push pull converter. Okay. 
I do not think I can start this push pull converter, look something like this. As the power rating increases, one has to go from forward to push pull, forward converter is suitable till say 500 to 700 watts or so. The reasons are same as what we gave for flyback, the forward. As the power rating increases, definitely I need to increase the, uh, I have to use the magnetics, I have to improve the utilization of the magnetics. So, definitely I need to use both halves of the BH curve, then I, <coughs> so what is known as the push pull converter. The question is, L m and L 1 are same or is there any other significance? L m is the magnetizing inductance, L 1 is the self inductance. Um, self inductance is uh, leakage plus uh, L m. Okay. Over here we have neglected the leakage, leakage definitely, however tightly coupled coils they are, there is a small leakage will be there. L m is the magnetizing, L 1 is a self, leakage is always there. You can reduce it by tightly coupling, uh, by improving the coupling between them. In a flyback converter, when the air gap is in introduced in the transformer to reduce saturation, how can it follow output voltage equation? Yeah, I agree, I understand your question. If there is an air gap, see, whatever the expression that we have derived, first of all, there are a lot of approximation that we have made, but then it is okay. See, we are deri deriving an exp uh, expression what is the voltage equation? How did you derive the transfer equation? By equating volt second per turn, volt second per turn. So, what is the voltage applied to the primary? I said VDC, but it is wrong, it is not VDC. See, there are, one is, what are, the, what are the errors that are introduced? One is, this coil has its own resistance, R. This device has its own voltage drop, okay. So, therefore, actually it is VDC minus I into R minus V switch is the voltage applied to the coil, approximately, okay. If the winding resistance is very small, if V s is very small compared to this, then yes, I can neglect. Otherwise, you have to take the device drop, especially if I am using a very low solar voltage panel, then I have a switch. Now, 1 volt may be comparable with your 12 volt solar panel, then I have to take this into account, this drops, this drops. So, that has to be taken care of while designing the number of turns, the suitable values of N1 and N2 you take. Now, it is not, definitely not VDC, we are not applying VDC to the coil, voltage, actual voltage is resistance drop minus the saturation. For example, see, in a AC, what is the voltage induced in this, what is the voltage here, definitely not. Uh, V1, N1 into N2, definitely not uh, V1 into, uh, it is V1 by V2 is equal to N1 by N2. No, this is not, not equal. It is true for an ideal transformer. It is true for an ideal transformer. Actually, it is it is E1 is to E2 is equal to n 1 by n 2, e 1 is e 2 is equal to n 1 by n 2, not v 1 by v 2 is equal to n 1 by n 2. I need to take care of the winding resistance, leakage, everything. Here in addition, there is a switch drop as well and that may be comparable with, with or comparable to the solar panel itself. So, 1 volt or 2 volts, you may not be able to neglect. So, take care while choosing the suitable turns ratio. It is not V1 by V2 is equal to N1 by N2, please. Yes, Amrita Koyamathur, do you have any questions? Sir, in a discontinuous conduction mode, the current is always going to be in zero level. So, for operating in a converter in a discontinuous mode, it reduces our efficiency. No, no, no. 
So uh, how which, can we which, which converter are you talking target about? this? Uh, no, which converter are you talking about? Sir, what the far, so forward converter. No, what do you mean by conduction and discontinuous uh, conduction, uh, continuous conduction and discontinuous conduction? Sir, continuous. No, no, no. What exactly it means? Sir, because if we operate our. No, please see there are. I am not talking about load current is being discontinuous. The flux in the core is discontinuous. Please, it is not the load current. See, if I take a uh, just an ordinary buck, discontinuous conduction means the inductor current. See, this is the, there is a difference. See, ordinary buck converter, okay. When I am saying discontinuous conduction, it is this inductor current becoming discontinuous, becoming zero prior to just prior to closing the switch. It is something like this, okay. IL for a buck converter. When in flyback and forward, or using a transformer, or or in isolate, isolated DC to DC converter in isolated DC to DC, they come flyback, forward, and push pull. Discontinuous means flux in the core. Flux in the core. See if you see the current waveforms. This is the inductor current. Is almost a current source. Almost a current source, but the flux has become zero. See here, flux has become zero much before closing the switch for the second time. So this is discontinuous conduction. Please do not. Mix up two issues in the sense in 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 non isolated converters, discontinuous conduction implies inductor current. In isolated DC to DC converter, discontinuous implies flux in the core. This current is approximately current source, but then flux in the core has become zero here. And therefore, the discontinuous the name discontinuous conduction. So, okay, sir. Another question. So, in that case, what is our condition of the load current? So, whether we are supplying by a discontinuous mode to a load. So, what is the load current condition? If whether it is continuous or discontinuous. Where have you connected the load? You tell me. You are connecting the load across the capacitor, isn't it? This voltage is constant. We are regulating this voltage at a constant value. If the circuit is complete, current will flow. There is nothing like discontinuous load current. You can have discontinuity in load current only if there is an open circuit. Because V naught is regulated at a particular value. It is, it is supposed to remain constant, V naught is supposed to remain constant. So, if the circuit is complete, current has to flow. So, load current will remain constant as long as load resistance remains constant. That has nothing to do with discontinuity in flux or whatever, please. So, do not try to mix. See in drives for that matter, when you say discontinuous conduction, current in the armature is 0. In non isolated fly power supplies, discontinuous implies inductor current becomes 0, not the load current. You are connecting the load across the capacitor and that voltage is supposed to remain constant. If there is, if the circuit is complete, current has to flow. Discontinuity in current can happen only when there is an open circuit. Is that okay? Paramati, go ahead with your question. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the frequency range of flyback converter when we are using ferrite core transformer? No, no, no. Uh, frequency, frequency depends on the power ratings or power and voltage ratings. I cannot give an unique answer. It all depends on, depends on the power rating. Okay. See, there are two types of switching. One is a hard switching and a soft switching. If you are doing a very hard switching, 
in order to reduce the uh, size, you may try to increase the switching frequency, your losses will increase, you may not be able to go for a higher value. It all depends on the power rating, the way you switch, the way you switch. Are you doing the soft switching or a hard switching? What do you mean by hard switching, soft switching? I will tell you sometime later, towards the end of maybe next lecture. It all, see, there is no unique answer to your question. It depends on the amount of power the device has to handle the voltage and current rating. Now, please. See, there is a question from Shupur. Regarding load current, one parameter, we have to consider that boundary between two modes. What will be decided the value of inductor? Hello, sir. Why forward converter can be designed for a higher rating compared to flyback converter? You try to understand the operation of flyback and forward. What are you doing in flyback? You are storing the magnetizing energy. In a, you are storing energy in the magnetizing inductance and transferring it to the output stage. What are you doing in forward? You are simultaneously drawing the current. Primary and secondary, both of them are carrying current simultaneously. So, you have to design the transformer accordingly. Cross sectional area of the conductor that cross sectional area of the conductor that is used to wind the primary coil is much thicker than, than the one that is used in flyback. Flyback it has to carry only the magnetizing current, whereas in forward the primary current the coil primary coil has to carry magnetizing current as well as the equal and secondary current. You are using a thicker conductor. See the See, there is a difference in operation itself. What is the effect of leakage used in flyback converter? <coughs> what do you mean by what, what do you mean by what is the effect of leakage? You have to take care of the energy associated with the leakage inductance. I showed you the circuit configuration in the last class. I will show you the equivalent circuit, transformer equivalent circuit. See here, this is the leakage magnetizing this is a flyback okay when i close the switch yes this is the path when i open the switch there is a path for the magnetizing current there is no path for the energy that is stored in the leakage inductance so if you do not have to provide any path definitely there will be a voltage spike appearing across this switch might damage. Of course, there are ways either you put a snubber across the switch, you put a snubber across the switch or you modify the circuit itself. The circuit modification I had shown in the last class. Please refer to the yesterday's lecture note. It is there is one power circuit configuration. I have why again I have to draw. So, when I close both the switches, yes, this is the path. When I open the switch, whatever the current that is flowing to the magnetizing inductance, it will try to flow through this path. Sorry, you could not see it. So, this is the path when you close S1 and S2. This is the direction of current. This direction of current has to be maintained. Is there a path? Yes, there is a path. That can current now can flow through bold lines I will draw. This is to take care of 
leakage energy associated with leakage inductance. There are other way circuits also. 